Yo, my people, welcome to Behind the Hits, hosted by Mixtape Madness with myself, Ebbs. In this series, we're going to be showcasing the growth and evolution of production in the UK rap music scene over the years. Playing an important role in Grimes history with the legendary Wu instrumental to later become a high profile record producer and artist, working with Chance the Rapper, Childish Gambino, Future, Lil Wayne, Meek Mill, KSI, JME and more, SX. Bow, we're here with another episode of Behind the Hits and the man in front of me, if you'd like to introduce yourself to the people at home. Yo, it's SX. Uh... Yeah, artist, producer, singer, songwriter. Only wear shorts. It's humble. You can see he's yeah, very, yeah. very humble, very humble. We're chilling, man. We're chilling. Very humble. Just quickly, before we get into like all the questions about the music and life as it is now, um, I want to just strip it all the way back. I want to know, baby SX, you know, whether you were a Dennis the Menace or yeah. you were... I want to I strip it back to just your childhood. What it was like growing up in Wolves? Um, if you, Obviously, if you did grow up in Wolves as well, obviously, yeah, yeah, I yeah. assume you did. Kind of quiet, man. It was kind of just me and my mum and uh, at times my sister, but she lived with her dad. As well. Yeah, yeah okay. so We had uh, my half-sister. Um, and yeah, just kind of quiet. I was just chilling. I was always on my own in my room. So I think that's why I ended up making music. Oh, okay. From just being like in a space where I'm making sounds like I beatboxed first. That's how I got into the whole... Oh, what, what age was, what age was this like, then? Bro, like seven. My mum was definitely like banging music in the house. I think that's uh, where I got introduced to music oh, firstly. Okay. My brother was a DJ as well. And kind of just being around that, I think when I got to being a teenager, I was like, yo, I want to be a DJ. Oh, so okay. I was DJ Essex. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. A lot of people definitely won't know no, them, no, no, them no. early days there, man. But... but a lot of people do, especially in Wolves. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, man, that I just got bored of playing other people's music. Oh, okay, like it's I, my time now. What? Bro, when I learned you could make beats on a computer, like, yo, yeah. I was like, what? Okay, so <laughs> but beatboxing at seven, you're doing the DJ. In school, for example, was it a thing where in school as well, you've hit a point in school where you're like, you know, what was there a point where you're like, nah, I'm bored of this. Like, you know, I already know what I want to do. Yeah. Why am I here? Like, why can't I leave? Can't I do? Did you have that as well? 100%, or... man. Okay. I knew that, like, making beats was for, for me from, like, 13. Oh, yeah, that's that's early. Like, I was just like, this is what I'm doing. Okay, yeah. yeah. I like to get to the bottom of it because it's like, when you see, um, mm. when you see Rory McIlroy when he's young, like, playing golf young, yeah, he yeah, could yeah. be bloody wrestling bears. No, nah, for, like... <laughs> for real, for real, for real. I'm like, when's his moment? Like, when was your moment where you're like, nah, nah this bro, is like, for me? From, from young, like, I think I started playing the drums at around like age 10. Yeah. So from then I went into DJing and then it evolved. Like I, I wanted to be a drummer, but then I was like, nah, I like DJing. Then I'm like, oh, nah, now I like to make beats. Now I'm like, nah, I want to sing on my beats. Oh, I Next, see. I don't know what I'm going to be doing, man. Obviously, to cover for, there's old fans there and mm. new fans here who may not know um, the legacy you have before, at a really young age, you know, mm. kind of transitioning to the person you are now as like an artist, yeah, producer. Yeah. Um, we Rhythm, I'm sure you've spoken about this a lot. It's Whether you're sick of it or not, I don't know. Bro, but, it's, a, it's a big part of grime history. Yeah, yeah. I love speaking about it. Yeah, it's, it's massive. I This is, yeah. as a fan, um, I never thought I'd be sad today. <laughs> I'll be so real sick. with you, man. And to know that that was a beat you made, freestyle beat that wasn't even used. Like, no, no, no. Do you know what I mean? Uh, for those at home that want to know a bit of the story about it, um, talk to them about how that came around and how we actually got into that position where it was like, you got your Bro. DWEs and everyone freestyling. Literally, I was 15. I just made the beat for somebody. I've never said who I made it for. Yeah, I never yeah. will because like, yeah. that's just jokes. But um, he was like, nah, man, I don't want these American sounding beats. Oh, whoa. So I was like, all right, cool. But that was all I was into, like, growing yeah. up. Like, I loved, like, at the time, it was Dirty South music. That's yeah, what it was of course, called. yeah. But all, like, Southern hip-hop, uh, that was me. So 808s was always implemented into my beats okay. from, from from then. So, yeah, I was 15 when I made that beat, though. Um, and then random, like, I just put it to the side, forgot about it for, like, two years, literally. Then when I was 17, me, I think, Jamie Dredd, who... Uh, run Stay Fresh with Desperate at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Stay Fresh. Um, yeah, man. We was on the way to London and it just came on in the car. And it was me, I think, I can't even remember who was in the car, but we was all free. I was freestyling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But we was all just vibing to this beat. It was on repeat. And it was just called Woo. 
Oh, okay. Like, you know, with four O's. A lot of people call it W-O-O. Rhythm. Oh, yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. But like, nah, yeah. it's just called Woo. Yeah, we just started, we turned it into a rhythm and just basically everyone just started freestyling on it in Stay Fresh. We all released a, a version. Obviously, I didn't freestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that was for the car journey only. But then, yeah, bro, like, it then turned into, like, people from London started doing freestyles yeah, on it. Yeah, that's when it was... It just turned into its own thing. But I will say this is... Ras Kwame was the first DJ to play it on Radio 1. And oh. that was what made it. That was at a time where if you got played on the radio... It was huge, man. It yeah. like it made people pay attention yeah. to the song. What was sick about that time was, even if We Rhythm didn't have its moment, I was yeah. working very closely with Marvel Boys. I was doing that kind of sound, so, which was completely different to We Rhythm. Okay. But both happened at the same time. Yeah. So like these songs that I was doing with Marvel was getting hella looks. That okay. got me in with... Aside from We Rhythm happening, but... That got me in with Chipmunk. Like, he called me yeah. one day when I was, like, 17. Yeah. He was the first big artist. That must have been a moment. Like, yeah, man, yeah. it was sick. Like, he was the first big London artist to, to call me and and say, yo, we need to work. And the first song we made was called Last Man Standing. Ah, uh, Featuring yeah. The Week, Essien, Wreck Free 2, and Sincere. Yeah. People don't even know who People Sincere don't know, is yeah, the, the, now, the, the, but, yeah, like, yeah. you know. Um, bro, that's legendary. Like, but that just opened up so many doors. And then I've got, like, Wretch calling me, Tiny, you know, and even, like... Blade Brown, you know, all of like fr from many different spectrums yeah. within the industry. That's, an that's another mm. thing people don't even know that Blade did. Blade was spitting on even grime beats back then as well, but it, it, it's yeah. not something that surfaced. But I feel like my Do beats you know have mean? never been grime. Yeah, yeah that, you know, I've never made grime beats in my opinion. Yeah, I feel like you know? the thing with that is it's because of the era and how people have just it associated was it's 140 with, BPM. Yeah, it's you know? like. This is definitely. I'm, I'm happy to be affiliated with it. Like I love yeah. Prime, you know, as well, and still do. But just like I've always felt like my beats were hip hop. Oh, okay, like, that's yeah. just that's just me. Even though they're they're 140, and it was definitely with grime intention. Grime mm. is gonna forever evolve. Like it did turn into drill. Like people just yeah. move with the times. Like not yeah. not fully, obviously. There is yeah, people that still do grime, but like most people that were doing grime turned into moved on to drill or. They just got older and stopped making, yeah. you know what I mean? In your pastimes, if we put music to the side, mm. I want to know what is the pastimes? Because I look at you as a very, if you want to do something, you're going to do it and yeah, you're yeah. very creative. What If you put music aside, let's say it doesn't exist, mm. God forbid, but <laughs> what would you do in Clothing, your spare time? 100%. I was going to say, because you do, you put a lot of pics up and stuff and you can mm. see, uh -huh. you can't, by the stances, the poses, yeah, yeah. you do like it. You can. Man's the drip that <laughs> I like how you dip your toes into everything, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you can see that you're not afraid to do it, you're not. A, do you know what I mean? Then, course, and I, I find that cool. Work. So now, Thanks. what I want to do. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, yeah, I wanna, what I want to do now is um, get into the mind of SX. So, the creation process. I, I was saying the other day uh, to, to your manager, I was like, I know it's not bog standard creation process for this guy, especially with the end product he puts no, out. It's not, man. So it's it's very processed. You know how I want to do it. I want to say, run me through a day in the life of SX where you've got a studio session plan, maybe later in the evening. Yeah. You wake up, run me through the minute. You wake up, what goes on, and then when you get in the <laughs> booth. If I know I've got studio here, yeah, I'm not getting out of bed until <laughs> like an hour before, bro. So if studio is booked at six p.m., yeah. yeah. Just know, SX is in bed until five pm. Is you know that and now is that because <laughs> is that because SX is lazy or because it's so busy now? It's actually, both of them. do you know what I mean? It's both of them. Yeah. Originally, it was just because I'm lazy. Oh, okay. but now because I'm busy as well, like I yeah. deserve that. Extra. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I'm a man that needs like ten hours, bro, minimum, and I never get it, so I'm always oh, okay. miserable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's helped me get into my zone. I don't like to overthink it. I like to just get in the studio, not have any pressure, okay, and just like. That's why I stay in bed because my studio is in my house. So, okay. Wait, so, so when I'm feeling it, I'm just like, yeah, let's go. I'm a producer first, so okay, yeah. I don't just go on YouTube or find beats that are sent to me. I start them, okay. you know? And I might make four or five beats before I even start to get like a melody that I like. Oh, okay. But, so it's but not once just... it hits, once I find a melody with a lyric, like yeah. the song's written. Oh, okay, okay. So I want to now tap in then to, since you're saying, you know, it is producer first. Um, when it's not your own stuff, mm. but it's for another artist you're working with, what it does it just vary from person to person? Because it could be a thing where you're always prepped before someone comes in, or is it a thing where you wait for them to come in, you have your convo, you feel what they want on the day, or you know how it, do you have a similar process for everyone, or is, does it I really always, differ? Like, at the beginning, it was more like I was not to be big headed, but like I was 
more excited to be in the room or honored to be in there. So yeah. I'd be just doing whatever it took to be in there. But oh, now yeah. it's like, I feel like I'm at a point where anyone I'm in the studio with, I'm trying to consider them a friend. Oh, that's so I'm going to get to know them first. The first session we have, we don't even make songs. Yeah, We might just talk, feel it out. Um, but then sometimes it's like, I do have little ideas prepped beforehand where I can, we might be in a combo and be like, oh yeah, check this out actually. And then yeah. bam, the vibe just starts from there. Oh, okay. But I just don't like, there's some sessions that are hella weird, man, where it's just like, <laughs> okay, so how do you want to start? Uh, and it's like, yeah, I, don't, can't, I yeah. don't want to start. Yeah. Like you, what's, yeah, that's not good, Give man. me some foreplay, man. I'll yeah. something first, bro. You know what I'm saying? Help me out. That one got me. Help me out, man. Got me. So, me out, man. <laughs> viewers at home, turn the, mic, turn the volume down. <laughs> that, one, that one got me. That one got me. But um, talking of which, you say you like to build a relationship with the people you are in with. Mm. Um, I'm going to run to go-to food if you're in a booth or you're working in the studio. What's your go-to <laughs> cuisine? What's the SX go-to? If I'm in the booth, bro, um, bro, Nando's, man. Okay, okay. Nando's, and what from Nando's? Ooh, sometimes I get the 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 great imitator wrap. Oh, I haven't or, even had that, you know. Or I just get a double chicken wrap. Sometimes I don't want to eat chicken. Sometimes I do. I depend. I'm oh, a weird okay. one with it, but Nando's has both options, bro. So okay, fair so enough, man. Fair enough. Big up Nando's. Yeah, man. Just quickly, that was that was nice. So I'm just gonna run it back to the music because obviously we spoke about the um, whole grime era and everything. Um, evolution wise, what would you say is gonna be your? What part are you gonna play in sound going forward as you release things as a producer and even as an artist? Hmm. It's a tough one because how, how would you know now? Yeah, but, that's what I'm thinking. You like, know what I mean? How could I say? But I can say this is like I've always felt like I'm an originator with yeah. my sound. I feel yeah, like yeah. you know when it's an SX beat. Um, and just keep doing that. Just keep pushing myself to do something different, which yeah. means I'm going to be ahead of my own. Yeah, time. that I can, I can vouch you for. Know? I don't think you put out any normal things, any, like <laughs> said, any bog standard. Like, you can if it does sound like something else, I feel like it's still got like my little... Yeah, like, on. and that, I think it's good to have your stamp on mm -hmm. your own product because it's like, you. it's always good to have your own USP and your own things that of make course, you um, stand out. But I'll, I'll even, you know, get onto that because even then you haven't specifically said what. So I want to say <laughs> what qualities um, you as a person even, let's get onto, yeah. do you feel like are unique to you and help you stand out as a person and the art you you know you produce um i think i'm a very giving person man okay. so, so even if i'm in the studio with other artists or whatever i'm or even just in life like i'm a giving yeah. person so yeah i love people and just love to give man look at so that. that's like man. Yeah, we love we love all the warmth and all the happiness hey tom you can vouch for me I'm <laughs> I'm that's good man that's good yeah. man like i said i think you can tell the difference between someone who um just puts out music and someone who is music do you feel like, I wouldn't say limited because you're able to create and do things, but would you feel the structure changing has not capped you because you're obviously still trying to find yourself, but it's not as it was, you know, It's before. interesting because aside from the industry changing yeah. and my situation with a label thing, I've experienced like life yeah. differences over the last few years. So it's been, aside from the pandemic, you know, everything, it's been a mad like couple of years. Yeah, for it. It has, so man. on top of that, the whole label changing it, it might have been a blessing in disguise because yeah. I, I didn't want to release music during a, pand a pandemic anyway okay you and know? is that because you just you're not able to release music the same like i want to tour it yeah okay the yeah, way yeah. i was doing it before like i yeah. dropped my songs and and i'd make sure i have my tour booked and be in touch with my fans that's what kept it going and yeah. there was a there was a period where bro like you can't be in touch with your fans yeah it's nice to know someone's goals outside of just the music because 100%. you know you a lot of people aren't too focused on legacies nowadays and you know maybe leaving something behind but everyone has something bro i just want do. like i'm passionate about certain things and that's food fashion and music so like oh, okay oh well, you wanna, can't go wrong gaming with as well but like i don't even get the time to game anymore yeah. so it's, it's annoying but but those four things like i want to turn into um I want to tap into them, man. To be fair, though, I, I looking at your career and who you are as a person, I've mm -hmm. always, I, not just me, I think a lot of fans will just have you down as a, he will, if he says he's going to do it, he's going to do, do it. it he's just going to do it. So that that doesn't yeah. even shock me. I'm sure there's going to be people at home that wouldn't shock them either. But um, yeah, if we now go into, um, I want to know, um, this is now down to what you can say and what you can't say, but yeah. every producer mm -hmm. has had really unorthodox moments in how they've come across 
placements or working with someone. What's mm. the most unorthodox, like, or like you've woke up or seen a message or <laughs> your day's just gone, wait, how have I en- actually ended up here? Like, There's too many, man. <laughs> what, so many which days. one c- comes to mind first, like, all the time? When Childish Gambino followed me on Twitter and he's just okay. like, he heard the We Rhythm. Oh, this was before yeah, he yeah. dropped his first ever um, album. This is good because I want to know what the story, because I know yeah. you've worked. And so Donald Glover I mean, followed me on Twitter. This was like, he was just getting ready to drop Camp, yeah. his first ever album. And I met him as well out here at his first show in London. Oh, that's crazy. It was like literally about 50 people. Oh, wow. No more than 100. Do you know what it is? There's pros and cons to it because I feel like it gets stressed. It, it depends because a lot of people don't, um, they're not used to that. It gets stressful because a lot of people mm. are waiting and they want results. Some people are just doing it. They love it so they don't care. I, I love do that though mean? because it's like you could be having one of the worst days yeah. and then bam, just something pops up and it's like, you know, you find out that you're getting this or yeah. it can brighten your whole day. So it's like, it's nice to have it unexpected, man. I need that, man. The spontaneous excitement. It's Guys, coming, if you know man. how to get it, just give me It's some. coming, man. Oh, yeah. You got me, man. You got it. Man. <laughs> Thanks, yeah, man. You're doing it right now. Oh, thank, thank. Yeah, you know what? I'll Just be real. Keep going, man. Never expected to be in a in yeah, this, bro. especially as a proper fan of, you of go, what you man. do, man. So, oh, just to you, run bro. from that, um, goals now. Just to wrap it up, um, mm. just quickly, because we know you've got an album coming out soon. Yeah. Um, I think it's. I don't want to say hard to top because I know you you always top stuff you do, but I the last thing you've dropped, I think, because mm. I no feature thing is one of the best things you've done. So thank I'm. You, I, I don't. So I, I expect a lot, but it's because I know what you can do. Um, mm. Talk us through your expectations for that album and just your goals in general from music and other things outside of music for I this year and onwards. With the album, I'm trying to blend like the classic SX sound. Yeah. yeah. Um, with like a new sound that I'm trying to like pop basically. Okay. Oh but yeah, that's it, good. But it's still SX. Yeah. So it's like, I'm just trying to tamper with that now. It's that twist you said earlier about yeah. putting your spin on things. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah. So I've got some pop songs on my album. I've got some SX songs. I've got some turn up songs. Oh, so you're appealing to all the markets now. That's I mean, cool. bro, like, I'm just a, like, all of my songs are like sad boy songs. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Like, I they, like that. Too. Even Down Like That is a turn up song, but listen but to it's the, the lyrics. lyrics is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, I'm crying in the booth. <laughs> nah, but you know, like, that. that's me. Like, I, I make relatable songs that yeah. but I put my own twist on it where it's like, you're still vibing even though yeah. I'm out here saying, yo. <laughs> <laughs> so even that aside so like let's mm. say while the music is dropping um i think the album would do well um hope so hope so. look no nah, don't worry i think <laughs> i think it'll be fine um i think now but outside of that because mm. you've been in this game for a while but like i said as an artist it's, you said it yourself a lot more newer so you still got things to go and do but mm. you are probably considering the stuff you want to do long term whether whilst you're doing the music or by the time you start ending so do you have any set plans that you want with the fashion stuff or the like stuff like you know even if you're joking with the food what, are there mm. any set plans for that obviously you can talk about no about I really things do you, want you're to thinking open a about restaurant, like 100% yeah. I've got the name I've got that website oh. everything I oh. already know what it is oh I've that's know, I've known it from 2014 that's crazy to I, hear, yeah. I, I, until I can afford to do it yeah the way I wanted I will never do something that you can't yeah bro so it's gonna happen man yeah. and it will be big bro and yeah. it will be a chain restaurant. And then I'll sell it when I'm like 50 and just be like, yo. You know, it's so good to hear that. It's so good to hear that. It sounds like I'm I'm here. I'm going through the same thing. I'm like, there's things I want to do, but unless I can do it to the capacity that I really want to do, I'll rather wait, you know. You just got to do it, man. Like, bro, you'll do it. Trust me, that's the way I've always... I knew I was going to produce songs for Lil Wayne. This is when I was 13, 14, like for real. I knew I was going to do it, bro. I don't know how. Yeah. I, I've also that's said real Eminem as well, man. but that's, that never happened yet. Yeah, yeah, it's, you don't you know, know yet. Well, like, but I always said Lil Wayne is I'm gonna produce for him, in it, Tom? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like for real, <laughs> man. Got Tom, they got Tom, man. <laughs> Guys at home um, that are watching now, new fans, old fans, everyone that could be tuning in now. What advice have you got for fans at home that are just doing something in life and yeah. they just don't know how they're gonna get there? What you know? How how do they get there? What do, what should they you know stuff they think you think they should hear? I mean, man, for me, like. I always knew I wanted to do music, but yeah. I never knew how I wanted to do it. Yeah. I still don't know if this is what I want to do, but I'm enjoying it. That's and key. you know, like, I never had the confidence to sing, even though I always knew I wanted to be an artist. This is while I was doing everything that we spoke about. You yeah. know? I didn't have the confidence to do it till I was like 25, bro. Oh, okay. So that's something I'm always mad about, yeah. you know? Not mad, but like, if I'd have started when I was 19, yeah. But I didn't have the confidence, so it took me six years to be like, you know, I'm gonna start doing it. 
But bro, I don't care. It's like what I've realized is like your life journey is is as long as you want it to be. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. You know, yeah. but like <laughs> um you've got time, man. Just do yeah. it though. Don't be just sitting there and be like, oh, I'm gonna do it. Just actually start doing it. Yeah. And then you'll realize, yo, okay, this is for me or it's not. Yeah. Like how can you know until you do it? Just don't say that you want to do something and lie to yourself and not do it. That's my advice. That it's something I can definitely yeah. agree with. There's a lot more opportunity than mm. there is regret when you look forward and back. So oh, like, I really, I really like that piece of advice. Mm. When it comes to the studio process, the actual mm. creation process, run me through things that go into like making a beat, like what what you're using. How do you how do you construct like your beats when you're making your beats? I mean, it it varies, bro. Like in honesty, sometimes I look like from in a small space. I've got just my laptop and. Um, you know, I don't really play keys too much, yeah. so that helps me anyway. Um, obviously, I'm using the circuit rhythm as well. I like being hands-on with it because remember, I was saying I'm a drummer as well. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So like, yeah. bro, like that gives me. If I'm laying down drums, just to be like, yeah. Even you can implement it with live as well. That's one thing I want to get into is like using things like because I make my own beats. Why not show that while I'm performing live? So that's a way that I could implement. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even think of that. You know, yeah. But obviously, in time. Yeah, I'm yeah. still I'm still getting into the live thing as well. Yeah, still reaching top form. So Come on, bro. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, the process is just it, it always is different. But um, being able to just be even with the knobs, you can move it and, and change the plugins and things like that. Yeah. It's just like, bro, it's just there to be hands on. Literally, it's quick as well. That's the okay. main the main the main thing I'm feeling. Efficiency. Yeah, man. <laughs> Efficiency is what you want because I'm an artist as well. So yeah. as quick as the beats are coming out. The lyrics are coming to me, so I just want to be able to quickly get on with the beat and slap the vocals in, you know what I'm saying? Bow, that's a wrap. That's episode six with SX of Behind the Hits, hosted by myself and Mixtape Madness with No Vision. Leave a like, leave a comment, sub to the channel, show love to everyone involved. I hope you lot enjoyed that series. Until next time. <laughs>